good morning. Today we're going to talk about calculus based Newton's laws of motion problems. But before our discussion, can you please hit the like button and subscribe my YouTube channel? Let's proceed. A tractor has a mass of 650 kilograms while cart A has a mass of 250 kilograms and cart B has mass of 150 kilograms. The driving force acting for a brief period of time accelerates the system from rest and acts for three seconds. Letter A, if this driving force given by F is equal to 820T newtons, find the speed after three seconds. Letter B, what is the horizontal force acting on connecting cable between the tractor and the cart A at this instant? So if we're going to proceed with our solution, first, we're going to draw T3 body diagram or FBD of this problem. As you can see, we have three masses, okay? Which involves a mass for your tractor, a mass for your first cart A, and then a mass for your cart B. Okay, for your letter A, if the driving force is given by F is equal to 820T Newtons, Find the speed after three seconds. As we proceed with our solution, a free body, body diagram is shown, which indicates all the external forces on the system consisting of detractor and baggage carts for carrying airline luggages. For letter B, as you can see here, there's a single FBD. A free body diagram of the tractor only is shown isolated in order to calculate the tension in the cables to the cart. Let's proceed with the solution. For the letter A, our summation of forces, horizontal or forces, at X would be equal to the mass of the full system times the acceleration X. And summation of F of X would be equal to 820T. Further simplifying the whole, your 820T now would be equated to the sum of the total weights okay, for the tractors, for the tractor and the carts as 650 plus 250 plus 150. And then you're going to multiply it with the acceleration. Your acceleration here, if we're going to simplify, would be equal to 0.78 of t since acceleration is a function of time we can determine the velocity of the tractor by using a would be equal to the, the differential of your velocity all over the differential of your time with the initial condition that your vo is equal to zero at t is equal to zero we integrate from t is equal to zero or your time is equal to zero up to three okay Setting now our limits, dv would be equal to a dt, okay? To integrate both sides of your equation, okay? Your dv, your dv would be having a lower limit of zero and an upper limit of three. The same goes with your a dt. Your a here as your constant, Further simplifying the whole equation gives us your V okay, would be equal to 0.3905 T squared. Okay. How did we get T squared? By using integration through power formula of your variable T. Okay. Setting the limits of the whole equation, okay, 0 as your lower limit and 3 as your upper limit, now, our velocity becomes 3.51 meters per second. And then for our letter B, summation of forces with the X component would be equal to the mass of the tractor only. Multiply it with AX. Okay. Further simplifying the cool terms gives us 820T minus your tension would be equal to mass of the tractor 
multiply it with 0 0.7805 of your C. 820 multiplied with your 3 minus T, substituting the mass of the tractor as 650, multiply it with this constant, 0 0.7805, and then time at 3 seconds, give us your tension nearly 8,000 of newtons. Recall that V is equal to ds all over gt and A is equal to dv all over gt. If acceleration is a function of time, we can use the calculus forms developed in motion along a straight line as shown in this example. However, sometimes acceleration is a function of displacement. In this case, we can derive an important result from calculus relations. Solving for dt in each, we have dt is equal to ds all over v and gt is equal to gv all over a. Now equating these expressions, we have ds all over v would be equal to dv all over a. We can rearrange this to obtain ds is equal to v, the differential of your velocity. 10 kilogram mortar shell is fired vertically upward from the ground with an initial velocity of 50 meters per second. Determine the maximum height it will travel if the atmospheric resistance is measured as Fd is equal to 0 0.01 V squared newtons, where V is the speed at any instant. So in this problem, we are given with the mass as 10 kilograms. We are given with the equation as Fd would be equal to 0 0.01 of V squared in newtons, and then the initial velocity of 50 meters per second. We are uh, required to determine the height or your y. As you can see in this FBD, okay, the shell here has the following forces. The drag, okay, FD, as your atmospheric resistance okay, points downwards, the same goes with the weight of the mortar shell. Initially, if we're going to limit our y, y o would be equal to zero, and our initial velocity is 50 meters per second. At the maximum height, y is equal to h, v is equal to zero. The free body diagram shows fd2 act downward because it slows the upward motion of the mortar shell. Thus, we can write, okay? as you can see here, summation of your vertical forces would be equal to mass of the mortar shell, multiply it with the acceleration of the mortar shell. Okay? If we're going to uh, further simplify the left side of equation, which is the summation of Fy, okay? since everything, okay, Every force is pointing downwards, so your drag force is negative, so minus Fd minus the weight of the mortar shell, and then you're going to equate it to the mass of the mortar shell, multiply it with the acceleration of the mortar shell. Okay? For this instance, our Fd here is equal to 0 0.01 V squared, so it becomes negative 0 0.01 V squared minus 98. O would be equal to 10 multiply it with A. How did we get 98 here? Since this is under the variable weight or W, you're just going to multiply the mass, which is 10 kilograms with the Earth's gravitational acceleration at 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. Further simplifying the whole equation gives us A is equal to negative 0 0.001 V squared minus 9.8. The acceleration depends on V and is therefore variable. I repeat, the acceleration depends on V and is therefore variable. Since A is equal to F of V, we can relate A to V using the rearrangement described above. So ADS is equal to VDV. We replace ds with dy because we are dealing with vertical direction. ady is equal to vdy. 
minus 0 0.001 b squared minus 9.8 times the differential of your y or the differential of your height is equal to b dv or d v the differential of your velocity we now separate the variables as vs and dvs on one side by on the other okay as you can see here We're going to separate both sides of equation, dividing both sides of equation with negative 0 0.001 v squared minus 9.8, okay? Leaving dy or the unknown on the left side of your equation. And then establishing the right side of equation with v dv all over negative 0 0.001 v squared minus 9.80. Now, we are going to integrate both sides of equation, okay? For the left side, we have a lower limit for your dy as zero, okay? To your upper limit of unknown h or height. And then the other one, we have a lower limit of 50 and then an upper limit of zero, okay? Further solving this one, Simplifying this one okay. gives us h here would be equal to the negative of this one. Okay. And then further simplifying the whole terms, okay, applying integrating v dv all over negative 0 0.001000 v squared plus 9.80 here as natural logarithm. Okay. And then its constant becomes negative 5 times 10 raised to 3. How did we get that? 1 all over this one okay, gives us negative 5 times 10 raised to 3. And then the natural logarithm of your base as 0 0.001 v squared plus 9.8 okay, with lower limits of 50 and upper limits of 0 gives us an answer of 114 meters. Okay. So since these two problems, we had encountered what? Power formula for integration. And then another one is the natural logarithm. Okay. For further questions here, so how did we get with the natural logarithm of this base? Okay. Remember, if you have the um, independent variable and then the differential of that independent variable all over this one, which is the independent variable. If we're going to determine the um, integral of the base here or the, the, the denominator here, okay, it becomes what? Your 9.8, if you're going to get the differential here becomes zero. And then this one would be twice of negative 0 0.001. So it becomes negative five times 10 raised to three here. And then V, okay? So you're just going to add here as twice of negative 0 0.001 here. And then factor it out on the integral side. Okay, let's um, find other problems regarding physics and calculus. Mm. So that concludes our topic because other examples here relates to friction. Okay, days of friction and Newton's law. So that concludes my presentation. Once again, I'm Engineer Joseph Masawai or Joe Masawai. For any further questions, you may message me through my Messenger account or our LMS inbox. Have a nice day.